Okay. So uh, we're here today, and we're going to talk about identity in Christ. Uh, I'm Harold Green. This is Aaron Rademacher and um, Aaron. Aaron, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be reading from uh, Revival Culture, which is um, a book of 15, I think, Bible studies. But uh, the first one uh, is Identity. So if you don't mind, um, yeah. you can get that up, and I will right there, mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and pray. Um, Heavenly you. Father, thank you for our time together, and I pray that uh, we're edified in the most holy faith and that this would be a benefit to all who listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Aaron, what, my brother, you, you, you mind starting us off, uh, read that first page and we'll kind of, I may interrupt some, or you may want to pause and make a point, but go ahead and we'll okay. see what happens. Number or lesson one here, your identity in Christ identity. We are all in search of something very important to life, our identity. There are many places that we often go to uh, to inform ourselves about who we are. Now, the approval of man. When uh, we often go to our parents, teachers, our friends, coaches, brothers, and sisters, books, and other media, TV, internet, movies, songs, etc. These can all be defined as others. In many instances, these sources can be useful, but perhaps more often than not, they can distort our true identity, misinforming us of who we are. And we can even become unhealthily dependent upon the approval of our fellow man, following its whims and fancies about the bedrock of truth, with a capital T there. What are some things that might go wrong when we depend too heavily on others to inform us on who we are? How might the over-dependence on what others say about us cause confusion? All right, let's, let's pause right there. Yeah. So let's say, for example, um, with media. Let's go to what media says, what it means to be a man. Yeah. What it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a musician. Like, let if we, would we just, like take the media's word on any of those things or other aspects of our identity, what could go wrong with that? Well, firstly, whoever's putting that media together is likely a person or a group of people, right? And it's likely that any piece of media is gonna have a limited view. Just by definition, you know, uh, in terms of a person or group of people creating it, there's no way that it could have the totality of perspective to really explore that issue. So it is yeah. in, in of its own nature going to have a limited view of that topic. Not, that it's I, I would say not only that, but most media has some profit motive or some agenda. Exactly. So they're going to pump, you know, if we make you feel insecure or feel like you need our product, it's like it doesn't matter what it happens to you and your identity and your sense of who you are as long as they get what they're after. I mean, think about how the media portrays men. Yes. Yes. Every single man on every show is a bumbling idiot. Nobody is, you know, there's no honor. And so what if we take the media's opinion of that? How mm -hmm. would we be thinking of ourselves then? If you're only getting a limited perspective on what it means to be a man, for example, then it's, from what I understand, it's built into us to, I've heard it said, blindly copy what we see. Right? We're doing that from the time we're kids, we're, we're born. So we're going to blindly copy the behaviors of people around us. And we'll yeah. start externally. And over time, we'll do it internally where we're copying mindsets. Yeah. So if you're constantly exposing yourself, right, or being exposed uh, against your own intentions to a particular perspective on that, then yeah, yeah, it's going to be limited, funneled down that yeah. way. 
there are examples out there, media examples of uh, other other perspectives, sometimes more complete perspectives on what a man is or could be, should be, you might even say. But unless you are of the mind to go seek out perspectives that go outside of that box that you're much more uh, often given, then you're going to be sort of stuck with that small box perspective of a man, a what bumbling a, idiot. What about, what, <laughs> yeah. about, uh, what about coaches, teachers, friends, other, other people in our lives? Like what could go wrong if we put too much of our identity investing it in what people, other people think of, of us or what they say about us? Well, those things are fluid. Right? Those things are not consistent. They're yeah. not a fixed point of reference. Yeah. And so they're subject to change from so yeah. many different variables. Right. If your identity is based on these things that are variable, yeah. right, then like it's it's if you're trying to navigate from one point to another and you're using movable points of reference, yeah. it's not a good yeah. way to right. navigate. I, I, right. I, I did like, a two like, years ago where we had to establish fixed points yeah. of reference to get from one place to another. It's you, like you building your that. foundation on sand, right? right. Sand, or, or in the middle of the water. Ships, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I like to think too that, uh, did you ever watch Behind the Music, um, VH1? I've seen one? some of them. I've seen some of those. So here's the plot line. I'll tell okay, you. tell okay. me. Okay. Every artist that ever made VH1's Behind the Music yeah. desperately wanted the approval of man. They wanted to yeah. be famous. They wanted to be popular. And so, and then when they got there, it's like they felt like they had arrived. And every one of them had a downturn in popularity. Yeah. And then their sick, their their ship sank. Mm -hmm. And they got on drugs. They lost everything in their life. Man. Because the approval man is fleeting. Like you're saying, it's shifting. It Sometimes you get accolades the next day you get criticism and mm -hmm. as long as that's what you're basing your identity off of you're mm -hmm. in trouble you're in deep deep mm -hmm. trouble i i want to go back to something you were talking about with like the media yeah. aspect of things so i was listening to a a, a video the other day that it was a it was a psychology course from several years ago right and the teacher was actually talking just briefly about seeing the first episode of The Simpsons, yeah. right? And he talked about um, this character, the, 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 the father there, Homer, right? And that's a great example of the bumbling idiot yeah. archetype, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's very true. And yet he was able to say, if, if you're able to bring in um, a perspective that says there, there has to be some grounding principle here that uh, that we could be hopefully working toward like there there has to be a hierarchy in there like there's got to be a better if we can say that he's a bumbling fool in so many ways that means he's not what he should be or could be right and are there elements there where he is like oriented towards something that's good and so i think what was said was that he in that first episode he was like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was he was devastated because he didn't get his Christmas bonus from work. Right. right? And what was cool about that, he's clearly not qualified to be doing his work at a nuclear facility and everything like that that he's supposed to be doing. Horrible, horrible idea, candidate for a job like that. Yet, um, he was oriented toward his family and making sure that they were provided for, taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that's why he was devastated when he didn't get the bonus he was expecting you know, because he had intent for that to benefit the family. Probably had some intent for it to benefit himself, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, fleeting pleasures. But what was cool is I never looked at it that way before that. Even in the midst of... I just want um, to say hi. We broke our Careful. recording. Yeah, how dare you? We're, we're in the midst of a <laughs> podcast. Oh. Hi, this is Scott Anderson, another brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another obtrusion. <laughs> we'll forgive it this All time. Right. No, no, you're great. We, we, we've got to get him in here sometime too. That's to right. Stuff. So yeah, the the train of thought I was on there was so he he didn't get what he was expecting, 
And even though he probably would have devoted some of that bonus toward, you know, fleeting pleasures, he still wanted to devote that toward bettering his family. So even though he was the bumbling fool, there's still this desire in him to move towards something that's honorable, right? Mm -hmm. And that that should tell us something. Like we get bombarded with, well, that's the norm. And then we're only going to see, we're also like being trained to see only the surface level of a lot of that stuff too. And yet deep down, this bumbling fool is hungry for something that's noble. Otherwise he wouldn't even be trying, right? So that tells me that despite all the attempt to maybe muddle this idea, of, like for example, what a man should be, right? You can't fully erase it. Yeah. It's still embedded in us that there's right. something better than what our standard um, aims are. And we right. should be looking toward that fixed point of reference well, to base our lives. This on. also gets skewed with um, the profession you're in, like being a musician, you know, taking other musicians thoughts on, on who you are or building your identity about what you do yeah. and not who you are. Yes. And there's a lot of reinforcement of that within given communities yeah. of, of, workers of different kinds but anyway the other uh go ahead and do the next the yeah, next look. page so so you want me to read this verse portion we got here yeah go ahead and hit the verse yeah so the verse reference that you've put in here is from galatians chapter 1 uh verse 10 am i now currying favor with human beings or god is what um, paul was writing here in the book of galatians or am i seeking to please people if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. In other words, and this is your words added to this, uh, we are either a slave to Christ or a slave to others' opinions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good stuff. You get to pick your slave, yeah. right? <laughs> you get, you're, you're, it's going to happen, you're right? Gonna, yep, you're going to be sub, subservient to something. Right, and that's a heavy and, word uh, for a lot of people, yeah. right? Um yeah, but it's like yeah. The, the, it, it doesn't always necessarily have to mean uh, the conceptions that we've. That's another area where yeah. the media has sort of, not sort of, very heavily yeah. directed our yeah. visions on what a single word mm -hmm. must entail. Yeah. And it's like there's a lot of words that we think mean something in our culture that are much broader than the way we tend to use them, right? And so this idea, at least from a biblical standpoint of being a slave, yeah. is many times. By choice, devoting yourself to right. Well, or something. and he uses that term bond servant, mm -hmm. which is a which is a choice of right. someone to continue to serve in a certain household mm -hmm. um, for life. Yes. So they had their freedom ready if they if they want to move on, but yet they choose to stay with a certain master. Mm -hmm. That's bond servant. Correct. Yeah. Which is still a slave status. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, but it's by choice. You're not and anyway. You're not that's charge. That's Paul. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the second aspect is um, self-thought. Yeah, self-thought. So, you know, one area of gaining your identity is from the judgments of others, from mm -hmm. the media's presentation of what it means to be who you are, whatever. Sure. But also your own thoughts. Let's see what uh, Scripture says about okay. that. Okay, so self-thought. Another place we go to inform us about who we are is ourselves. The problem here according to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, is that, and here's, I guess, a paraphrasing quote of that verse, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? <laughs> and this is you talking again. If you think about how quickly your heart, your own heart, can be captured, like when you were a kid and so desired a certain toy for Christmas, but after receiving it, the joy of anticipation faded, and the toy soon ended up in the corner, untouched. The heart is just plain fickle. What other issues might arise from rooting your identity in what you feel or what you assess concerning your own self? Right. So, uh, you know, I run across this all the time with, with people, you know, who one of the two things, either they're self-deprecating to a point that it renders them ineffective mm -hmm. or they're so prideful that they can't receive any instruction. This is, 
this is the, how unstable your own heart can be concerning who you are. It's not often extremely balanced. Self, self-awareness does help, mm-hmm. but it's definitely not going to be the final anchor no. for who you are. It's not a fixed Your own reference. feelings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, you're like tossed on the waves. Right. I had a good day. I had a bad day. Mm-hmm. You know, I had many successes at work. Work was a total failure. You know, again, it's what you do isn't who you are. Very true. What you do isn't who you are. Yeah. Your identity is deeper than that. There was a there was a film some years ago. It was called uh, Batman Begins. It mm-hmm. was the one with uh, that Christian Bale. Yeah. Guy, right. The newer iterations of those. Um, not the most recent. I guess they've had another one. But the point is that at one point, this young lady who's his love interest in the film says to him, uh, it's not who you are underneath, Bruce, but it's what you do that defines you. Right, I remember and that. Yeah. So it's reinforcing that who you are is based in your actions. And that's still something that's fickle, that can change, right? Uh, there yeah. has to be... Yeah, an ultimate anchor point that would supersede even, that. Otherwise, even your, you can't trust that's right. that identity. That's right. Because, you know, what you're doing may be the perfect fit for, for where you are or not. So if you, let's say you get trapped in a, like an alcoholism back, um, box. Yeah. You just start drinking a little too much. Work got hard. Maybe you lost your job. And then, and all of a sudden, you find yourself drinking all the time. So are you going to define yourself by that? I've seen people who do. I know. And and this is where the self-deprecation comes in. And you start to beat yourself up constantly, driving you further into oblivion. What if who you are isn't rooted strictly in what you do, good or bad, but in the thing that we're all really searching for? Who we are. Who we are. Who we really are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the, the same is true of the opposite. You're doing great and you start thinking, you know, my actions define who I'm so great. <laughs> and But you're missing some little piece about how you treat people or some other thing yeah. that you're not doing. And you'll be blind to it and, and you cease to evolve as a person. And it's I think it's a little scary to some people too because... If you suggest that there is a fixed point of reference upon which to yeah. define who you are, right? You didn't create that. It's something that is well, superseding you, it right. transcends you. So there's a little loss of control, if it's, you will. No, it right? is a loss of yeah. Because do we do, do we knit ourselves in our mother's womb? Do we just Why would we expect <laughs> that we're going to be in control of that? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's see what the next let's one says. Yeah, yeah, we're we're hot on the trail. We're moving here. All right. Finding God. The fact is that most of us have to exhaust all other resources before finally turning to God for answers. And it makes sense for us to turn there because who would know more about us than the one who created us? Boom. There you go. And he helps us. This bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he graciously steps into the middle of the mess. <laughs> it's just like, just accept you're making a mess of it. <laughs> right. right. If you didn't figure, if you didn't set the boundaries for what this is right. all about, right. In the first place, who you are, then you're going at it with that blindness to yeah. all that. Uh, right. You're going to make a mess. It's like, it's part of the deal. We expect that. Right. Or we should. Any rate, any rate uh, he graciously steps into the middle of the mess we make from depending on others and ourselves instead of turning to him. He gently unravels the knots we have made of our hearts, following every whim and wind except for his breezes that refresh and revive. Without rubbing it in, he faithfully restores our soul. I like that. Uh, That's that little Psalm 23 reference. Yeah. That, I dig that. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think what happened, I know what happened in my life in mm-hmm. terms of my pursuit of figuring out who I was, was that 
I, I did exhaust the other possibilities. I mean, I, I had a successful career. I had, you know, a decent income. I had all these things that I had always dreamt of having. Yeah. And yet it brought me no fulfillment at all. I was literally still bank bankrupt internally and unable to really become my real self. Yeah. Cause I didn't have the, the thing that matters the most that perspective of who you are in terms of immovable right that comes from him and him alone that's why you know the bible says our identity is hidden in christ jesus what else is in this this portion yeah, I'm, let's I'm do kind that. of curious now you're curious you know it <laughs> <laughs> i know but it always like teaches me new things <laughs> that's, that's good that's well put the bible says in first corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 as for me it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or by any human authority. Yeah. That would be the approval of man. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. I don't even trust my own judgment at this on this point, rather. Right. Now, verse 4, my conscience is clear. That's Apostle mm -hmm. Paul. But that doesn't prove I'm right. Right. Now, see that? This is the Apostle Paul talking. Right. He's talking has planted all these churches and, yeah. and he's saying my conscience is clear and that doesn't prove i'm right right just have just just having a clear, clear conscience, conscience which how how often do we get that as being like an idea of like uh like pinocchio for example always yeah. let your conscience be your guide yeah your conscience is still you right, right? that's right unless it is informed yeah. right unless it is yeah. um how would i say regulated yeah, maybe yeah. Be a governed word by he who formed your right. conscience right? right itself yeah it's it's all his creation all right keep where, mm -hmm. where are we yeah still in that paragraph okay so this is now you talking not paul basically the apostle paul has found who was the only faithful and true source of information about who he was thank god for his amazing ability to renew us and give us a firm foundation upon which to build our identity. Now, when we are tired and weary from trying to sort it all out by ourselves, we are finally ready to get our lives right side up. Yeah. Yeah, so at the end of that verse, he says, it is the Lord alone who will decide. Right? I'd have he to my, read it to he remember. Said, he yeah, says, my conscience is clear. But that doesn't prove him right. He says, yeah. but it is the Lord alone who will decide. He's submitting his very self, his mm -hmm. identity of who he is before God himself. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah, it is. That redefines everything. Your whole motivation changes if now... You're tethered to the one who created you. Yeah. The the things you think, say, and do, right. if they're flowing from that source, the source right. the source, yeah. they're going to be completely based off of that source, just like a river. And you can't find that source mm -hmm. in media or in what others think or, I mean, in institute. I mean, you get... Parts of God's truth mm -hmm. in all of those things. Right. And he can. can speak through that through the, medium. Yeah, absolutely. He can find yeah, avenues, absolutely. people who are willing. Right, right, that's mm -hmm. right. And, and and he does. But yeah. but how do you know until you have relationship with him? Right. You've got to have a way to check it, right? right? You have to right. have to be able to test it against because that Because you're, you're going to get flat in, in your life no matter what you do, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no matter who you are, like the VH1 behind the music people, they got flack eventually. Oh yeah, they might have had a, a, a zenith in their career, but eventually they got flack. Well, what are you going to do if your identity was based on the approval? How, how are you going to survive that and not end up on drugs? If you knew who where you were and you knew who life comes from, it'd be a lot easier to stand your ground when the crowd subsides mm -hmm. there are some people excuse me who can 
really organized themselves in terms of their behavior, in terms of their thought life. They can get really good at that, right? There's, there's quite a long way people have gone. You can see some examples of uh, maybe they would consider themselves gurus or, or whatever yeah. it be in a particular discipline where they've figured out on the physiological side how to do, and the psychological side of it as well, how to organize themselves in their life so that they are uh, able to do things that largely allow them to have success in what they choose to do, right? It doesn't put them into, right. um, yeah. it wouldn't put them into places in life that we would generally consider destructive or yeah. uh, failing, right? But even if you are at the pinnacle of success, it physiologically, psychology, psychologically yeah. rather, um, it doesn't extend beyond the existence outside of this world. Right. And right. what are you potentially missing in terms of what you may be here to do right. in this because world? Because it's all running through the grid of your own approval, mm -hmm. your own judgments, your own... I mean, this is exactly what me in the late 90s, you know, I had success, yeah, but I was missing so much. And I couldn't have guessed how much until things changed. Mm -hmm. And I got started to work toward getting things right side up. What does it say about getting things right side up? Let's get to that part. Rooting ourselves in God, living right side mm -hmm. up. Once we have decided to turn to him, it is time to face Jesus. John 3.16, I think most people, even if they're not having a relationship with Christ, have heard this verse. Probably the most translated into other languages yeah. verse in the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world so much. Well, I'm, I'm sort of mixing the King James English there. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah. And here, Acts 4.12 says, There is salvation in no one else. Mm. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Mm. Now, you, you're putting it here. When we ask Jesus to become our Savior, he forgives us of all our sins, past, present, and future. Now, that's an awesome thing to stop on for a second. Yeah. So when he was... Hanging on that cross 2,000 years ago, right? He was paying the price right. required for the disobedience, the lack of trust in God that everyone had ever committed, everyone was committing at that time, or would ever. Yeah, right. That means me right now, what I'm going to do next Thursday Right? right? That's going to be it's not interesting. But like, I'm planning my sin ahead of time, right? <laughs> no, no, it's like, it's inevitable, right? I know it's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean that I can't grow and do less of some right. things that right. are negative and trust God more. But I'm still a human being. I still have a predilection for listening to the this voice in yeah. here and listening to those Flesh. other voices out there. I'm, I'm, I'm affected by them. So yeah. knowing that, Excuse me. Knowing that in advance, all of that was already paid for at that point in history, right. that moment. Right. That's so wild to think about. Like, there's no right. sin I could ever commit that hasn't already been forgiven. Right. Now That's it's wild. it's a little bit mind blowing. Um, it's a little bit mind blowing because I think we get into the self punishment. Yeah. So much that we we sort of cut ourselves off from what the power of the grace of God is, which is to make you want that, that, that purity, that, um, that oneness with Christ, you know, it's the grace of God. It's the love of God. Like, like John three sixteen. I read it like this, that for God so loved the world. That this was Jesus was the act of love that he had, and it covers every sin. Mm -hmm. So what what do we do if we don't have Christ and we sin and we mess up and we know we messed up? What do we do? 
We beat ourselves up and we get stuck in a pattern of it. Mm -hmm. and you have Christ in your life and, you, and you're going to still make errors. You're still going to mess up sometimes. But because of his love and his grace, he's, he's cast uh, a light across the trajectory of your entire life that brightly outshines the shadows of your own mistakes. And you're constantly drawn back into his light when you have him present in, in your life. That's, that's what he's doing. He's bringing more light and not your, your sin never gets out of proportion if you continually give it back to him. He's not going to put you right. into something that you can't deal with, that you don't have a way out of. If you're his, well, he's, he's the way he's out. let you go. Right. That's right. All right. What else you got in there? For sure. Let's see if I can find my spot now. <laughs> All right. So, that... It, when we ask Jesus to become our Savior, as I said before, he forgives all our sins, yeah, past, past, present, present, and future, and he makes a way for us who have sinned to become to come before a holy and all-powerful God and actually relate. To have relationship with him, the Lord then deposits in us the Holy Spirit who guides us into all truth. This is the beginning of a long journey of discovering who we truly are as children yeah, of God, right, right? Our Heavenly Father, right? And that's this is the big thing, you know. Our identity is hidden in Christ. It is, it is Christ who opens the door to relationship with God by forgiving us of our sins, because we don't have an, we don't even have an imagination for what no. it would be to live without sin being right. our primary objective. <laughs> Until we've been forgiven of it. How ridiculous does that phrase sound when you say it? Right? <laughs> Sin being our primary objective. It is. Well, to fulfill the needs you. of the flesh and, and, right. and not consider anyone else's needs or anything else. I mean, we are by nature very sinful. Right. People. I'm hitting puberty there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, through the forgiveness at, at the cross, you actually get a, a vision of what it is to not be motivated motivated by only mm -hmm. the base nature. And that and then you tap into relationship with God who deposits the Holy Spirit. In other words, so by through Christ we actually get God in our own vessel. Like he comes to dwell in us. Mm -hmm. He comes to that we actually don't have to be apart from him ever. That's yeah, where that's you the, want your identity because right. what's the right thing to do? How do you know? Without God, I don't understand how how do you know what is the right thing? You know, it's like the Proverbs, some of the Proverbs will have, you know, if you do this and such, it is right. And then in the next verse, don't ever do this and such. Like it's like, what what are you saying? How do you know which one is they're saying two different things? No. God is the one who knows which one is the one you apply in each situation. Exactly. Exactly. You could adapt that musically, right? Or you could you could reference to it by looking at a musical example. You can have, what would you say, a, a, a chord or um, some technique, you want to say, uh, on your instrument that is appropriate for one situation, but totally inappropriate right. in another. That's right. right? That's there, right. But there, it's not that it's wrong. It's right. just you got to apply it for in, the in situation. In one song, it's A minor. Uh-huh. In another style, it's A minor 7. Mm -hmm. In yet another style, it you need the ninth. Mm -hmm. And in another style, the ninth needs to be tucked in the middle of the chord. Right. In another style, you need the 11 too. The voicing. Which one works? Which one is appropriate? Right. To, yeah. It's just like when we talk you with know? each other. Like there are times where you need to shout. You need to make yeah. sure people can hear you. And there's other times you got to bring it bring, down. Bring it down. And yeah. not be harsh. Right. Because and it, that's yeah. the spirit that needs yeah, to be Yeah, the spirit. To that. That's right. Situation. Right. That's right. It's the spirit. Mm -hmm. So how do you even know? I mean, until you're connected with the spirit, what what is right? Yeah. Yeah. What you, is the you right? You will thing? have an inaccurate 
measuring tool. Well, you're if you're operating apart from the source, mm -hmm. it might get you in the ballpark even. That's even possible. And that's yeah. what can be so frustrating because yeah. even just being in the ballpark, if you think you're on target, but you're just in the well, ballpark. You go back to deceptive. your own, yeah, your own judgments right. on things. You think, well, you I'm know. fine doing it this way. Well, you're in the ballpark, but you're not hitting the target. Yeah. And the target's important here. Yeah. It makes a it huge is, difference. It is the difference, right? The target. All right, what else you got in All there? All right, let's do this here. This new life will lead to greater revelation of who God is, which in turn gives way to more revelation about who we are. Finally, we can know who we are without the deceptions and agendas of men and without the overpowering influence of our own wayward hearts. We will now be con connected, excuse me, to God. There will still be, uh, pardon me, let me reread that sentence. While we will now be connected to God, there will still be lots of potential input from other sources. We must now learn to stand in who we are. At first, it seems we are sifting and weighing everything we hear, see, and experience through the Holy Spirit. As we grow closer to him, we hear his voice clearer and obey quicker, growing our roots deeper into the soil of his love. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. I think when you first cross that line and you decide, you know, I do want to put my life in the hands of the one who created me. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to get to just like you're still getting all those influences. Right. And you have to grow in your dependence on who he said you are. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense that if you're you're unaccustomed to uh, seeing yourself in that way, yeah. that you would just suddenly be like, oh, I get it. It's all to put together. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. Like you said it's before. Exactly. Yeah. Your favorite band. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's not my favorite band. It's but, one of them. I like them a lot. It's up there. I like but Steve Perry. <laughs> and why? And Neil Sean. <laughs> and Steve Smith. And I'm, Jonathan Cain. I'm kind of a big fan of the I was going to say. Yeah. All right. So I uh, actually just knocked the page off. Here we go. All right. So the final page on this yeah. chapter, firmly rooted. Yeah. When we live this way with our identity firmly rooted in God, we become an unstoppable force for the kingdom of God. Yeah. We can live more like Jesus. Yeah. Becoming his disciples right. and helping others to do the same. Yeah. Now, we are ready to truly discover our true identity. Right. To serve one another. Ooh, yeah. There's that service, that servant yeah. uh, slavery sort of concept yeah. we talked about yeah, before. Earlier, yeah. And that's the connotation that it should have. Yeah. Why is it wrong to serve one another? That's not a bad yeah, thing. No. We need to serve one another. Yeah. yeah. To serve one another in love, right. helping our fellow man without entitlement yeah. and favoritism, right. free of impure motives. Yeah. God will teach us when we are fully surrendered how to love one another yeah. and as picture to the right conveys. We'll show, uh, there's we'll a picture, show, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a picture we'll, in the book. We'll show you the picture. In a second, picture yeah. in this book conveys. Have peace within our souls. That's a big deal. Because so many people, myself included, have yeah. plenty of times where when we are taking input from those sources yeah. that are distorted, we're left with a turbulent soul. Yeah. Like we're we're craving. Well, that that's peace. what that's what that does when we depend on what others think, what we think, mm -hmm. and we're not rooted in Him. It's too easy to get caught up in your emotions and manipulated too by the Very by the world so. or by you know other forces. Well, if you're all stirred and, uh, up, you're not going to be able to right. see clearly, and that's so right. it's going to be much more and you won't easy have for an outside force, right. force to manipulate. Right. When yeah. you're at peace with God, you become the influence. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It reverses the whole yeah. system, right? Mm -hmm. Because without him, you're just pushed along by any wind of right. teaching any you know, what the latest style is or the latest whatever. In God, it's like you're tethered to the eternal. It's yeah. like the, the parts of you that need to be developed get developed. Right. 
and the parts that need to be cast aside get an opportunity to be cast aside. I like too that there's this juxtaposition, if you will, between the manipulation you receive from those outside and internal yeah. sources of information about yourself versus the, uh, what was the word you just used? The influence yeah. that you then receive from being informed from the source. Yeah. You, you now are equipped not to yeah. put forward that same spirit of manipulation that was, right. you, was done to you and right. manipulating you, right. pulling you and pushing you about, right? Yeah. With an agenda that is not for an ultimate good, right. necessarily. Yeah. But now you're given that power to influence right. others. And I think seeing a distinction in the way those two terms, at least here, are used is important, yeah. right? You're not... not trying to get people to just do what your agenda is right but tapping them into, into the, the source ultimate agenda, right so right? that they can figure out uh -huh. who they are before most holy god right. the same way you're also wrestling that uh -huh. same thing and it ultimately it's like important like i go back to john three sixteen, for he so loved the world uh -huh. this is the motivation of god to transform us into children of god to help us stay plugged into the source and become more than just, you know, victims of temptation and, and the world and, and and being astray, but actually become a force in the world, yeah. drawing people to him. You know, and, and you know, we we've been doing this discipleship thing for, for how long now? Fifteen years or something? Oh my goodness. It's, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, my, my thing is, like, I don't, Harold doesn't need followers. Christ needs followers. Exactly. That's the same thing Paul was saying. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't baptize yeah. you, you know. Yeah. It wasn't me. It's like, you know, I'm of Apollo. I'm of, I'm of right. Paul. It's like, no, no, no. I'm of no, Christ. That's right. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. We are disciples of mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need follow, you know, I need to follow Exactly. And the one I follow, I want to invite others to mm -hmm. have the same honor and and fruit and you know, just the the knowledge of like who who am I completely change it's a game changer. It's a game changer. And you yeah. just stop feeling lost all the time. I mean, you still have questions and yeah. and struggles yes. and wrestles. Got it. I got it. Uh, you know? <laughs> right. Right. But it but it's in the context of, of you knowing who you are and who has the answers to your questions. Yes. Yeah, and God does not matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, God does not mind my hard questions. No. He invites them. He does. That's pretty cool, too. Yeah, like, nah, I'm sure you've run into leaders who don't encourage questions. They're like, no, 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 try, just, I've got my agenda. Yeah, right? yeah, I know. And I it's very, that way it's very frustrating, and, yeah. you know, as a musician, and I'm sure for, for those watching who are musicians, you know, you're a critical thinker. <laughs> yep. You, you're a creative thinker. And so anyone that tries to cut off your questions, you're automatically suspicious of them. Yep. What are you hiding? Right. And it's like, bro, let's ask, you know, this is where my life really changed was back at that, you know, early 2000s when I was so angry at the scripture that said, lean not on your own understanding. I was like, what are you talking about? How else am I supposed to understand the world? Because yeah. this is where I was um, spiritually. And Wrestling through that, I mean, it's it changed. It changes everything to know that there's a force higher than me, mm -hmm. way higher. Yeah, who loves me, and who is can handle my wrestling. <laughs> and I asked hard questions at that time. I was asking my my uh my my small group leader, you know, how can you not lean on your own understand? Like I it just it just mm -hmm. befuddled me. Right. If that's what you know, like to conceive of something that's 
Yeah. So outside it's of that, it's, right. it's completely alien. Like it was to to adopt an alien concept. Yeah, that's so not going to come so, natural. So I had hard questions. Like, mm -hmm. like, what do you mean not lean them up? I mean, and I asked the hard questions, but you know, you didn't. The humans oh, God, don't know always know what to do with your hard questions, but God knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the most powerful prayers, and this is sort of off the subject, but kind of not off the subject, is show me the the way things really are. You ever tried that prayer? In in one form or another, yeah, it, it yeah, it will blow your yeah your whole like little you know. We often get in these little self righteous traps, you know, where I'm right about everything. And when you ask God something like that, and He starts to show you the other pieces you've been mm -hmm. missing, mm -hmm. well, it's a mind melt. It's a mind melt. It's real rough when you do it about yourself when you're like show Ooh, me oh, as I really oh, am you're like oh, he sometimes oh, will stop you a little bit in my experience yeah, like, are you sure yeah, you yeah, that? You really, yeah. do you really want to no, know how but you really that's, are but that's that is, we don't really know how we a lot of times we don't and we're blind to our yeah. own um, sin yeah our own our own corrupt depravity yeah yeah um, what we sometimes want we're like how could I possibly want that but you don't know how well you can lie to yourself yeah, right. when you're just informing yourself right. based upon what you think right. and from stuff that you've been in, you've been manipulated by yeah. for years from outside sources. Right. That's right. Yeah, it, your motivations can be a mess. It really when can. You really be. get to look at them like, wow, I really am after my own pleasures right my own my own um, way gratification my right. own my own my own influence my own power right. my own everything pleasure to a goal towards a goal yeah that's not a goal at all it's like a, a yeah. castle made of sand yeah right that's right and then you get to that and you're like i wanted that whoa that's awful <laughs> let's let's pull that picture up i want to show okay you. i want to so, show yeah you. so this is yeah, it's it's right there. Okay. Go for it. I'm right. I'm looking at this on Dropbox. I'm like looking at the PDF file in. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. All right, so in my so house. your identity goes through the cross into God. He deposits the Holy Spirit, and then we move right past what others think and what ourselves think, and we become who we are. That's the drawing. And, That's uh, legit. And I think there's one other scripture, which is really cool. I was going to read. You want to read that final paragraph there? Yeah. Here's one more verse to consider. And this is um, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you as a reward what he has kept for his people. For Christ is the real master you serve. I dig it. Yeah, right. Right, that's right. And you know, you know, you know, if if you've had that point in your life when when you said, you know, I'm not getting this, you know, right. I've got the money, I've got the position, I've got why am I so empty still? I'm I'm inviting you to consider this this lesson on identity. Maybe to take your identity to your Maker and to consider the work of the cross, which is for the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. You know the the stuff that we do that's wrong, that is motivated purely for self, whatever self pleasure, self power, yeah. self whatever, and to allow. Christ to, to hit that reset button, connect you to the Father, and, and begin a new life where your identity has been settled in heaven. That's, yeah. Sounds pretty peaceful. I'm, I'm just, my own personal <laughs> journey is that it is pretty pretty peaceful. I still have my turbulent times. I still have my midnight of the soul seasons and all these types of things. It's how you grow. 
and uh, and all of that. But deep, deep down, uh, there's an abiding sense of peace and of purpose. And when I do get lost or mess up or lose my way a little bit or whatever, I know who to turn to. I know who's able to restore me. I don't have to wonder about that anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. God is good. That's that's well spoken. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like we should there's a song about that. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you are good. <laughs> you um, go straight to Israel, right? <laughs> of Israel. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh so um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion on identity. It's just the beginning of, of the journey, really. But I feel like it was worth unpacking, really asking the hard question of, you know, who we are and, and um, what impact framing our identity around the work of the cross and of God, who is our creator. Um, that that's that's the move that needs to be made. It's it's a journey, you know. And I remember like when I was struggling about lean not on your own understanding. I was so mad. I was mad for like yeah. weeks. Yeah, I still after I got, I still get mad. About it. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I figured this out. <laughs> right, right. See, I, see, Lord, of all my thoughts, they got it. And he's like, yeah, okay, yeah. I think you haven't you seen this yet. <laughs> I love you and stuff, but. Just, just watch. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Paul also says this, greater than you can think or imagine. And, and again, my experience has been that it is. The life in God is greater than you could think or imagine. There really is more there than anything you could ever dream up. And, and I really mean that. Like, the, the things that the Lord has allowed me to see and be a part of, that changes other people's hearts, change my heart. Every time I see him inject some of his light and some of his truth, mm -hmm. and just to be on the on his team is an honor. You know, even if I hadn't seen one miracle or anything, but just to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, to, to know for sure who you are, not just who you are, whose you are. Yeah. It's the greatest blessing I've ever received is a knowledge of who I am. To have more surety of who you are yeah. than being even sure that your name is Harold Green, right? Yeah. Like you can see that written on a piece of paper, yeah. but to know who you are right. as being a more sure fact, that's priceless. Yeah. It's it's the anchor. It's the anchor in the storm. It's the thing that keeps you from going and getting shipwrecked somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you do get shipwrecked, it's the mechanism by which your ship gets put together. <laughs> That's super counterintuitive, <laughs> right? But it works, man. Yeah. <laughs> Over Bro, this was a great conversation. Yeah, it this really was. a great was. opportunity. I hope, like... Countless people are blessed. Yeah. I hope it's used as a tool. Yeah. And that we get more opportunities to sit down and go through more chapters in the book. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, I guess uh, we'll call this the uh, kind of the end of the broadcast, and I will uh, pray us out if that's okay. Please do. Father God, we, um, we're so grateful and humbled. by your word, by the life that you've afforded us, that you've purchased for us our identity. You've empowered and given us strength and forgiveness that we did not deserve. And um, God, we're just grateful. We're grateful to you that we don't have to wonder anymore, who am I? that that matter has been settled. Lord, help us to run our identity through that filter every day. 
help us to have our thoughts washed in your word and have us become more aware of who you say we are and more moldable to to that way and um lord we just bless your name and and we seek you in this and all things and um we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Love. Love. <laughs>